Hi, I wanted to do a simple little video to kind of share with you guys information about a pageant interview and maybe what you can expect and to give you a little a few hints on how to answer some questions that might be a little bit difficult or you're not exactly sure how to answer questions. So the first thing that I want to talk about right now is how to really grab the judge's attention. Like, How are you going to really relate to the judges and make sure that they remember you? One thing you need to remember is when you walk into that judge's room, that is really one of their very first impressions of you. So it is super important to make a great first impression. When you're sitting down and having a conversation with the judge, because that's exactly what it is, is it is a conversation, you want to make sure to give as much detail as you possibly can when you are answering the question. If you're asked a question about your platform, if it's a platform-based pageant, and which I'm just going to use mine, which is seatbelt safety, and they could have asked me, why, why is seatbelt safety so important to you? A real basic generic answer for me would be, well, I was in a car accident once and I totaled the vehicle I was in, um, but I was able to walk away because I wore my seatbelt. That's not really going to judge the, to grab the judge's attention. If I was to go into a little bit more detail, something along the lines of, uh, about 17 years ago, I was um, in a car accident. It was a gorgeous summer afternoon. I had my window down. I was listening to my radio loud. And I was going about 45 and I, the car in front of me came to a complete stop and I hit him when he was at a complete stop and I was doing 45. The front of my vehicle curled up over the top of my, over the top, the hood, over the top of the truck. And I had to be cut out using the jaws of life to get out. Fortunately, I was wearing my seatbelt and I was able to walk out of the hospital with a few cuts and scratches. So you can see that going into a little bit more detail and giving the judges um, a clear view of the story, it, it really helps them to relate to um, why you are passionate about that, your platform, and it gives them a really clear visual. So it's always important that when you're doing an interview with the judges, you want to relate with them. You want them to remember you. So you need to make sure that you're very clear when you answer their question. And you want to also make sure that you inform them. Um, if you're throwing out a whole bunch of statistics at them, 43% of this, one out of four of this, um, 250,000 people here or there, that's way too many numbers. And the judges aren't going to remember all those numbers. So really, when you are in a pageant interview, it's not always the best thing to throw out tons and tons and tons of uh, statistics to them because that's not something that really they're going to remember and walk away with. They're more able to remember a story or something that can hit close to home that they can relate to. So that's kind of something to remember when you're going into a judge's interview and you're trying to connect with the judge. Um, also, you know, you, you want to you wanna laugh with the judges. You want to cry with the judges. You want the judges to feel your emotions. So don't go in there with a very stern voice that doesn't change at all. It's always the same tempo all the way through because that's boring. And I can tell you firsthand as a judge, when somebody comes in and sits there and starts talking to me like that, I kind of start to go, oh my gosh, how much time is left in this interview? I'm falling asleep. And then as a judge, I think, did I already ask this question or do I need to ask this question? I can't remember because I'm not exactly sure if she answered the question. So really when you're going in there, try to relate to the judges the best that you can. Um, have them feel how you feel. If you want to laugh with the judge, cry with the judge, just really try to get on the same emotional level with the judge. When you're in there, I also have a big, huge pet peeve about using slang words. I will tally the amount of times that a contestant uses the word like or um and and and. I tally that because that tells me that your presentation and your speaking abilities you may be nervous, so I'll give you a few, but if it's a constant, if you are constantly telling me, and like, and like, and like, I'm going to realize that your vocabulary 
is not as advanced as it should be. So really work on not using filler words and slang words, especially if you are a teen, because this is something that teens tend to do a lot is use filler words. And that's just because that's how it is in society today. Teens, that's how you talk. As misses, we shouldn't be using those filler words. I understand at times when you have to think, you stop, you pause. It's very easy to throw in those filler words. And if you feel that the judges aren't understanding where you're coming from, you're trying to make them understand by using these words. So, and so, and you kind of drag it out when you don't need to do that. You just need to answer the question and wrap it up and really think before you speak so that those filler words aren't thrown in there. That's, that's part of how you are, how you need to deliver your delivery of your interview to your, to your judges. Um, I had to make notes here. See, I even used the word, um, because I forgot what I was going to say. I, I did make some notes here about some mistakes that contestants do, but I think I will go into that in a different interview right now. I, or in a different video, because right now I really want to stick to interviewing and important features, just really basic important features that will help you through your interview process. I want you to get a pen and a piece of paper so that you can write this down because I think that these next six questions, seven questions that I'm going to ask you, you can turn these questions and relate them back to almost every single question that a judge will ask you. So number one, what I need from you are three words that describe you. When you're thinking of these three words, think about your education, think about your hobbies, think about things that you have accomplished in life. These are things that make you who you are right now. Okay, you can always go back and you can always give the perfect pageant patty, as I like to call them, answers. I am a leader, I am confident, I am sophisticated, you know, but really seriously think about this. If you have a platform, think about what makes your platform important. Are there certain characteristics of your platform that you need to relate to or that you do relate to? Think about that. Think about what it takes to be a role model in today's society. Think about what it takes to be a leader. Don't necessarily, you don't necessarily have to use those words, leader. Pull out your thesaurus. If you don't know what words to use, pull it out and use it and look through there and see what is another word for a leader. And then write down those three words that make you who you are. Because I can guarantee you in a question, there are questions where you can come back to one of those words and answer those the question that that judge just gave you. Now, on to step two. I want you to write down a living man, a living woman, a deceased man, and a, let's see, a living woman, a living man, a deceased woman, and a deceased man. Okay, got that? <laughs> living and dead for male and female. Okay. Now, I want you to really think about this because a lot of people for living will say their mom, their dad, their grandma, something like that. That is wonderful. It's great to know that you have such a high view and a high opinion of them. But I want you to remember you're trying to relate with your judges here. So think about somebody who throughout history, throughout time, in our world today, who has made a positive difference and such a significant change that you would really be able to, the judges can connect to them, you can connect to them. There's somebody who you look up to, who you want to be like. Think about those type of people when you're filling in this question. Think about if you have a platform, how did they, have they ever done anything to work with your platform? Things that they did, charity events, things that they represented, that they spoke on behalf of. Did they represent your charity somehow? Um, if you were for adoption, a great one might be Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie because they've adopted their children. So really come in and think about some of the people who are in society today, past, present, who relates to you uh, with your platform that you that are a positive influence. You don't want to go to the whole uh, Miley Cyrus type thing. That That's a big fat no. 
I mean, she used to be good back in the day, but usually that age group, the millennial ages, uh, not necessarily, necessarily living, um, have had a lot of life to live. <laughs> so you might want to stay clear of them, especially if you're a teen, because they're a uh, teen or a miss. They're around your, you guys are the millennial generation, just in case you don't know. Generation X, that's my generation. Uh, we really, you know, it's very hard for us even to look for role models in our generation because each generation is so different and we all have different views, different standards, different morals. So trying to find somebody who you can relate to in your own generation is very difficult to do. So, so you may want to broaden, you may want to do some research and kind of see if there's somebody out there who isn't necessarily on Hollywood in Hollywood, walking the red carpet, things like that, but more of a charity um, type of giver or somebody who's won the Nobel Peace Prize, something like that. Really do your research when you're thinking of a living and deceased person, male and female, by the way. This will also help you connect with the judges when you're answering questions because you can always come back to, you know, I really relate with so-and-so because of what they did. And that really relates to the platform, my platform that I'm representing. So there's something else for you to really consider consider when you're going in to an interview. Another way to connect with the judges is, you know, they can picture this person. They can, they know what that person's about. And if they don't, make sure you know the background of that person so that you can share it with your judge. So um, a couple of questions that I just want to throw out at you where you'll be able to go back to these, those first few items, seven items that I asked you to write down. Um, one of them may be, why did you enter this pageant? When you are competing, the chances of you getting asked this question are very likely. Why did you enter this pageant? Why do you want to be the queen of this pageant? Why do you want to represent this system? Look at those three words that make you who you are. And those are the answers. That right there is the answer to this question. It really comes back down to who you are, who you represent, and what you are wanting to accomplish as a queen for this pageant system. And um, sorry, I totally just lost my thought. It happens to the best of us, okay? But really right there, you're just going back to your three words that best describe you. Another question that you may ask is what is the biggest problem facing our country today? Okay, that's that's pretty decent because there's a lot of things that are facing our country today that are a huge challenge right now. And if you don't stay up on the news, I would also encourage you to uh, maybe grab a newspaper, uh, go online, take a few minutes just to get caught up on the most recent top stories. But try to keep it positive. It's so hard to take a negative question and make it into something positive, but that's where your people come into play. Again, you know, one of the biggest problems facing our country today is blank. However, when I look at my famous living person, I see the positive impact that they have played in our society. And wouldn't it be great if we had more of these people in our society? So really, you can use your questions there, living, dead, male, female, to relate back and answer that question. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? You, you may be asked that, especially if you're a teen. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? What do you want to do with your life? Again, come back to your three words that best describe you. And you want to keep those. Those are something that you are going to be. That's not just exactly who you are at the moment. That That's something that you want to continue to be throughout your life. So when you're writing down those words, remember that. That's something in the future that 10 years from now, you still hope to, to hold on to those and to possess those values. That's something super important. So always you can go back to those three words to answer that question. Where do you see yourself in, in 10 years from now? 10 years from now, you may see yourself married and having a family. You may see yourself being more career um, oriented and wanting to uh, start building your career, working your way up before you have a family and before you're married. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with starting out in 10 years wanting to be a mother and being a wife. And then after your kids have grown, starting your career. There is absolutely nothing wrong with either one of those. This is just the, they want to see 
where you stand, how you value yourself, and where you see yourself. They're not grading you on, oh, she should definitely never have children. The way that she's dressed and acts, definitely not. That's not what they're saying. Even though they might be thinking it, they're not saying it. (laughs) Trust me, back in the day, people would have definitely thought the same thing. (laughs) She should never have kids. (laughs) I have two now, and they're amazing. Another one is what platform issue are you going to promote? If on your paperwork, which your paperwork is so important, that's going to be another video, but you want to make it very clear what your platform is. If you have a platform that's all over the page, everywhere, you're not exactly sure, you know, I really like to um, work with the homeless but I've raised a lot of money for breast cancer awareness, but I donate all my time to um, seatbelt safety, driver's education, things like that. You're telling me as a judge that you really don't have one item that you're planning to promote, which is okay. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. But when I look at it from a judge's standpoint, I want to see somebody who has dedication and who has loyalty to to their to their platform. And if it is something where you're spending all of your time to with all of these organizations, that is kudos to you because I can tell you as a mother and a wife and also having a job, I don't have time to donate 10 hours a week to different organizations. My time is limited because I do have a family, a career, and I'm always busy doing something with my children. And that's what's important to me. So I I will say kudos to you if you can um, juggle more than one organization at a time. But I would be very careful because as a judge and I see that, I question, what are you leaving out? Is your family getting enough attention that they deserve? If you're a teen, are you getting your schoolwork done? Are you doing your extracurricular activities as well that you want to do? So just remember that when you're asked asked questions about your platform. Also, you may be asked, tell me the favorite thing about your state. So important. Know your state. It's not that hard to Google your state and find out what your state bird is, what your state um, slogan is, the logo, the the logo, (laughs) what your state is famous for, the type of um, materials that your state produces, things that make your state special and set them apart from other states. That's something that you want to talk about. Because every state has sunshine at least once a year and every state has greenery and every state, not every state, has mountains. But really think about it. We have Great Lakes here. We have beautiful mountains here. We see the sunshine here. What really sets your state apart from any other state? Are you the volunteer state? Do you guys consider yourself um, extreme volunteerists? That's not even a word I don't think. Do you, so do you volunteer a lot? Volunteer state would be Tennessee. So if you're from Tennessee, really set that aside. You know, we are all about volunteering and donating our time to different organizations in need. That's something that's important too. Because some of your judges may not be from your state. They may be from another state. So really, really know your state, what makes your state special, and what makes your state stand out. Greatest lesson you've ever learned. This is very difficult for a teen to answer because I can tell you, you have not lived the life of what um, somebody in their 30s or 40s has lived. But I just want you to think back. What has been one of the greatest lessons that you have ever learned? Sometimes the greatest lessons we've ever learned is how to say no. Because as pageant queens, we tend to overload our plate. We spend lots of time donating our time, volunteering at different events, things like that. So learning how to say no is something that's very important. And it is a lesson that has to be learned. So really think about the greatest lesson that you've ever learned. And even if it's just as basic as learning how to say no, go with that. Because that is straight from your heart and that tells the judge, okay, this is a girl who knows how much she can handle and where to cut it off at. So anyways, 
uh, that's the first of my many videos that I'm going to be putting out. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you come back and see what else I have, what other information I have for you soon.